Hey guys, Paul Geddes here from Tactical Sonar in Lawrence. Um, today what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through a setup of the HDS Live system with a 3-in-1 transducer and a PDRT in-hole transducer which has the remote temp. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to basically just set up one of my 16s um, that's been previously already set up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through it real quick and uh, and pretty much get you squared away just like we done on the carbon and everything else. So fairly easy. A lot of these settings are preset. I think they've basically taken, uh, you know, a little bit of everybody's, you know, great settings and worked them in um, and set them as a default from the factory. So there's not a whole lot of tweaks that you need to do. What is the major key? focused as always is transducer placement and making sure it's level making sure you don't have any blockage or anything else so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started so here we go all right so i have a hds live 16 so the first thing you're going to do once you turn it on it's going to actually ask you and go through the the little preset up and the auto configure and then it's going to basically come up to your chart so the first thing that I like to do is I like to go to pages. Your gear wheel is now settings. While we're on system, I like to scroll up and go to advanced, go to user interface, and turn on your auto hide menu. What that's gonna do is after 15 seconds, that menu is gonna slide away and give you another inch and a half of screen. Now, once that's done, um, what I like to do is I like to go into chart, and I like to turn on my heading extension. What that does is that gives you that blue line right in front of you know, your boat so you can tell whenever you're moving. You go to sonar. Now, here's, here's where it gets interesting. Um, your channel one is gonna be for your in hull. That's what we've got ours on is our in hull, which is the PDRT for channel one and our channel two is going to be our three in one so uh, whenever you get your unit you want to make sure that the network sonar mode is in multi-source if it's in single source it's not going to give you the option to turn on and it will not recognize your three in one transducer so you got to make sure channel one and channel two is turned on now from here the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to installation now as you can see whenever we go in to this unit right here it says source this unit channel one right so when we select that then you can go in and name that say if you want to name that we'll just name it in hole we're going to name it enter and then we're going to go to the transducer type and then we're going to select pdrt now this is for channel one so then we're going to hit save as soon as you do that if you look up top you should see in hole labeled as channel one all right so now let's go to pages we're going to go to settings sonar installation and then we're going to go to channel two, right? If it's set up properly and it's detecting that transducer, the transducer type should be AI three in one, and it should be grayed out. So you can't change it. Um, what that is, is it's auto detected and it's not going to let you choose anything else since it's seeing the proper transducer. So what I'd like to do is I like to go in and I like to name this three in one rear since I have a three in one on the front. So I press enter. Now that I've got my names, it's on channel two. Now I hit save. Now, if you look up up here, you got in hole. Where well, if I go to menu, when I go to source, I can pull up three in one rear, right? So now it's pulling from the three in one. And I can change all my settings from there. So now I can switch back. So I usually pull my source, my sonar source, from in hole. That's usually where I pull it. Now, 
I run um, a backup transducer and you know so I have in, in case something you know breaks or, or comes loose or anything else you got a fish going down right here um, you know that's what I end up doing so the fish is coming right back up right here he went down and then he started to come back right back up he got another fish there so when you get into sonar your settings i normally use 200 for everything um the sensitivity what i like to do is i usually like to go to a plus two uh or a plus one that means keep it in auto but actually let the sensitivity on the automatic let it help you and then basically you know just go a plus one um your color line is going to be on 76 when you go to advance your noise ejection and surface clarity is going to be on low scroll speed is going to be on normal i like to set my ping speed on the back at 19 because you want to offset your ping speeds uh, on the front and the back that way you don't have you know both of your transducers pinging at the same time you can gather a lot of interference whenever you're doing that all right so the next thing we want to go in and set up is we want to go in and choose our side scan all right so right now i've got it on right only if you, if you go to more options and go to left and right now keep in mind we're just drifting so it's not going to be a good picture now on the three and one you can actually on side you can go basically either um 455 or 800 um, I usually run it on 800 at about 120 feet depends on how shallow or how deep I am could be a little bit more uh, under advanced I keep my surface clarity on low now here's something else in advance see this flip left and right button right here if your cable if your transducer cable is up against the, the transom you're not going to flip that but if you installed your transducer backwards and the cables coming out you know pointing toward you know the motor side of it not against the transom then you need to go in there and flip that because that way what you're seeing on the right will be on the right versus the opposite i'm gonna have to crank this up and put us in gear we're getting close to the bank over here okay so now you go to your down scan next now as you can see you see this line right here right here so everybody wonders what that line is so since i'm actually pulling from my in-hole transducer it is actually at a different height than my three and one it's actually lower than my three and one so what that's going to do is that's actually going to put an offset on your mark for fish reveal so that's that's basically what that is right there that's your height difference between your in-hole transducer and your structure scan transducer now here's a way to fix that if you're just cruising and that bugs you so if you go in here and you actually go to three and one rear and then you go back to down scan you see what happens right here see once you're pulling from that same source it disappears All right so I like palette 10 that's the new palette with the lives uh, I also like 8 and 9 those are my three favorite palettes um, I do run fish reveal on down on one and fish reveal pretty much uh, off on my other palette um, as you can see over here I've got the fish reveal in the orange palette One of uh one of my buddies this week dropped a video mr mikey balls and he sort of shed some light on some of the configurations uh that we don't tell a whole lot of people about that we use using two different colors and two down scan windows which uh which really sort of defines everything out and uh you know helps us determine what we're looking at so when you're going uh on your down scan your contrast keep it on auto and 
adjust it while it's still on auto. You can go to auto plus one, just like your sensitivity, and let that automatically adjust, but give it a little bump in between. So, and you can play with that. That's gonna change pretty much how you're actually going to, you know, how deep you are and how shallow you are. Actually, you can see right here that the thermocline is sitting at about 20 feet. So you see how vague that is right there? Now look over here in this orange. See how you see your thermocline right there? That's where all the oxygen is in the water. So those fish are gonna be hanging out right on that line. But you can see, you can barely see that difference right here. Now if I go in here and crank my contrast up a little bit, now you can see it, but it sort of washes everything out. So I usually keep mine A plus two, A plus three, and tweak it. All right, so now, what everybody's questions on the fish reveal. Now I run mine a little bit low because uh, I don't like it lighting up like a Christmas tree. So I like on palette 13 for my fish reveal. Sometimes I'll run surface clearly on low, sometimes on off. The color line's on 76 and the sensitivity comes preset at 89 which is extremely high so what i like to do is i like to run mine somewhere in that ballpark of 81 to 76 just depends on what kind of water clarity i'm in uh and go from there a lot of times i'll turn it off all together because i just want to see the dots whenever i find them stacked up so other than pretty much on the the down scan options everything is is pretty simple uh, nothing major all the way around um, let's go back to side scan here so as you can see out here on this right so here's here's a good example so here's your fish so we're going to touch those and we'll zoom in so one two three four five six seven you got seven fish sitting right there on side scan you can see right here on the left side this is bait this is what they're chasing there's some same fish there. The biggest thing that will help you guys learn what you're looking at, so you got another fish right here. See, that's a striper. So all this bait right here is, you know, you can basically pay attention to how these fish are reacting. So with that being said, let's just go in and play. And your eyes may not like 10. See, on side scan, eight is not good for me. It just doesn't do anything for me nine between nine and ten is my magic pretty much where i feel like i've got you know i can really identify the different species and what's going on um some people even like this green palette i mean in the green palette it seems a little washed to me um some people even like number two the black and white and that's not bad or the baja pretty much which is number one like the mountain dew baja uh, but number 10 and number 9 are my favorites for side scan. Now down scan, I do like an orange and a blue palette. Like Mikey was pretty much in his video was explaining, not a lot of people will tell you that they're using that, but what we do that for is to see the differences because the oranges and the blues on different types of structure stand out a little bit better. You can see the fish there. I'm gonna go back over here to my side image in here. Now I'm looking at 120 foot out. I just went in to 100 foot. So what I'm looking at here is something like right here. So if I touch that, just remember guys, you can zoom in on that. So you just got some rocks right here. You got a tree branch right here. That's part of a, a tree right there. You got some fish suspended up here. So other than the basic tweaking um the biggest thing that one of the things that i like about the new setup is able to run six windows so i'll show you a preset like i've got right here so i've got you know a right and then i can go in here and change this to left only so i've got my right side my left side my down imaging and this right here actually was my video um uh, 
input so with my aqua view camera i can pretty much drop down and verify or if i'm going to be fishing brush piles for that day i don't want to go in there and just throw my bait in there and see if i get bit i want to drop my camera down and look and see what size fish we're looking at here um so um in order to basically have you know your your different palettes and everything set up right normally this is my setup i'm going to back up and let you see both so you've got palette 13 2d sonar palette 9 down imaging palette 8 down imaging you've got your chart and you've got your side imaging pointing to the left side imaging pointing to the right so by running dual systems side by side this is why i can cover so much more water and look both ways with not even having a blink the purpose of having this looking one way and this looking one way is because you want the structure as big as possible whenever it displays so yeah that that makes a world of difference here if you're already you know looking at something on a small screen and you shrink it even more just by the window size that makes a world of difference um so to give you give you an idea you see you're seeing up the bait here you're seeing how that bait sort of stands out a little bit better you come over here to this one right here see that sort of blends in so now we're starting to get into standing timber here and you sort of see the fish in the top of the trees there see the fish how they stand out in, in the orange so just play with it but as far as setup that's pretty much it um, now well, let me show you one other thing so on the chart setup uh, I always run when you go to more option I always run heading up uh, because I want whenever I see a pocket coming up on the left on the map I want that to be on my left I don't want it to be on my right that confuses me um, so there's my heading extension here the heading extension is a one mile at the end of the heading extension that circle is one mile three quarters half a quarter and then your triangle there is actually you so I hope this helps guys this gives you a little bit of insight of you know how I'm running mine how everything is set up um, one of the things that uh, we do a lot of is on the water classes and everybody knows that uh, but we also do a remote setup I'm just reminding you guys that if you're not close to me and you can't drive to me if you need a remote setup it's $45 an hour uh, so if you want to go through and me walk you through the system and how to set it up and what you need or set up your point one uh, And everything else, you know, that's one of the things So the last thing that I'm going to cover in this video is how we're actually setting up the point one And why we're actually doing this by I run two point ones and I'll explain exactly why I do that So let's do this real quick. It'll be the last thing. So we're going to go to pages we're gonna to go to settings, we're gonna to go to network, we're gonna to go to data sources. Then we're gonna to go to GPS. All right, so where I want to mark my GPS on the rear is I want to mark the point one is on my rear. Let me show you where it's at. It's about a foot from my transducer so that's going to be my closest point so my point one on the rear i'm just using just for the gps not the heading sensor right so as you know notice right here it says local so that means only this unit that i'm changing so to order to change that whenever it comes up it's going to be global so you just choose your blue button and you change your scope from global to local then you choose now if you're not running a point one it's going to come up and say hds live 16 or whatever your unit is this device now you just got to keep in mind that you're going to be basically seven foot off because you're marking where the gps of the unit is 
and you're looking where the transducer is. So you're going to roughly be seven foot off when you mark it. Now, now that the GPS selected is for my point one rear, now I'm going to go to vessel. Now, on your heading, you know, you can use point one global, rate of turn, point one global, but I'm actually pulling from the point one front. I may have had it, yeah, so I've got to see. See, I haven't even got mine selected right here. I can pull from the point one front or just use while I'm moving on the rear. I don't even have to choose my heading because it always does pretty good. On your front units, you're actually pretty much gonna go in and select it because that's when you're actually gonna be fishing slow and you wanna line up your brush piles. So, on the front units, you would go in and select on your GPS, you would actually select this unit, put it on local, select this unit, and that way those units are closer to the transducer than my point one is. When you come to the heading, then you're gonna choose your point one up there whenever you're turning. So, I know that's a little bit confusing. The other thing that you need to do if you actually have um, multiple uh, units on the network is you need to go to sonar and you need to go to water temperature it's going to be global so what you're going to end up doing is you're going to change that to local and you're going to actually choose either the three in one rear the end hull whatever you want to pull from that's where you need to select that from because if you keep it on global what they're going to do is they're going to actually fight over that same transducer who wants to use it so that's what causes basically one transducer or one unit has temp and the other one doesn't you turn one off turn one on then the other one's got it and this one doesn't so if you set each one each unit to local and select it manually they can pull from that the whole time so if you got any questions just uh give me a call i hope this is i know it's confusing the point one systems are very confusing in order to set up a point one like this there's some few things you have to do but it would make this video really really long um so when you need to set up a point one with multiple point ones um just give me a call and and i can set you up over the phone um the reason i use two point ones um if you put your point one in the rear it will work perfectly fine uh, it will mark, it will turn, everything's fine. I run a lot of river stuff. I'm a really shallow water fisherman. So what happens is when you put your point one in the rear, it slides around the corner. Instead of if you have it on the front, when the nose turns, it turns. On the rear, the, the tail end of the boat doesn't turn as quick as the front. So it sort of slides across the corners. And as fast as I'm running and as close knit corners that I'm running is I can't afford to be sliding around the corners and it not be pointing where it actually needs to be pointing. Now, by selecting the front one, the point one as the front up there on my front when I'm just fishing, I know that when I go and I move just an inch or two that it's moving with me. The front of the boat's moving, so that's where I use as my heading only for heading on the front so i hope that clears a lot of questions up whether you need one or two i'm real picky about where i'm hitting my marks and where i'm actually going and, and where i'm running i need to be accurate i have trails laid down so i can't get outside my trails when i'm running four feet at 75 miles an hour and i make a turn and i go outside my trail and it drops to a foot you know and there's rock everywhere so i can't afford that um, I have to be precise when I'm making these turns and whenever it's going around these corners. I can't have that thing sliding. So, and like I said, I'm more picky than everybody else just because I want these units to perform to the max that they can and I know what they can do. So, um, I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up on Facebook. Uh, remote setup number 864-992-6362 tacticalsonar.com. I hope this helps guys. Y'all have a good day. I appreciate it.